Jeffrey, don't do it. You're about to break one of the laws. No, Jeffrey. Ah, oh, he's never going to get out of this rut now. Adonis. Adonis was there on that early day when the 17 laws of self-improvement were carved into stone. He has been there from the start and he has seen the power of these laws. Listen, if you're still a Jeffrey at the end of this video, you're beyond saving. I'm going to walk you through the 17 laws of self-improvement and you need to know all of these because if you're doing almost all of them right, but you're just messing up on one, you're not going to be making the progress that you want to. Law number one, motivation is a treat, but discipline is a necessity. I think in our space, motivation is too heavily criticized. People say like, oh, fuck motivation. No, 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 no. Motivation's fucking amazing to have. You should see it as a, like a tasty treat. If you can be motivated for some of the hard work, that's amazing and you should really feel happy about that. But discipline is non-negotiable. Motivation is feeling like doing the thing, like going to the gym. Discipline is doing it even though you don't feel like it. So when you wake up and you really want to go to the gym, you can't wait for the workout, that's motivation. When you wake up and you really don't want to go to the gym, but you get your ass in there anyway, that's discipline. And discipline will save you on those bad days. Law number two, smart goals are king. Now you can go and consider like living a life without setting these clear goals. You know, you can say that systems over goals, like fucking James Clear says that in his book, which is stupid as fuck. The journey over the destination, stupid as fuck. The truth is when you set a big goal and you set like a reasonable time frame, like for example, okay, I want to make $10,000 a month within three years from now. And you just align as much as possible to that big goal, you'll accomplish it. A life where you don't have a big goal that you're working towards because you're doing this cute like systems over goals kind of pussy feminine shit you won't have that same level of drive there's a version of you that wakes up looks at to his wall every day and there's a piece of paper that says a big goal like 1 million net worth by the time i'm 25 years old and that version of you is gonna have so much more zest for life rather than the james clear atomic habits little pussy one but just get one percent better every day that's nice you can certainly go and do that but living without big massive inspiring goals just makes you feel so soft and timid you don't want to live like that law number three morning routines are overpowered. The easiest way for you to get consistent in your self-improvement habits like meditation, journaling, stretching, breath work, cold showers, is to do them first thing in the morning. Now, at the same time, your morning is also usually the best time for you to do your deepest, hardest business work. And so you've got to find a way to, for example, not have a massive morning routine so that you can still go and race to your work. But the reason why morning routines are so powerful is because often you might just end up not doing those good habits if you don't do them in the morning. Like, for me, if I don't meditate first thing in the morning, I just don't really end up meditating. I just don't do it. And so I make sure that as soon as I wake up, I meditate for 20 minutes. And you know what's interesting? I've become a better entrepreneur and I make a fuck ton more money when I meditate because I make better decisions for my business. Law number four, you must be a lifelong student. You should acknowledge right now that you will never stop learning. Just close your eyes and just visualize yourself right now as like, what is an 80 year old on your rocking chair in this beautiful wooden room? room with that fire and you're just rocking backwards and forwards on your chair reading your wife is coming in and she gave you a drink and you, this is your reading time that you do one hour a day that's like your your ritual you can never stop learning because the moment you stop learning is the moment that you will stay behind everyone else even when you're 80 90 100 years old you want to be reading because you know what the alternative is you stop learning and you start getting complacent Maybe your parents are like that already. They, they used to learn when they were in school, when they got out of school, and recently they've just become completely and utterly complacent. Maybe your father hasn't read or developed as a man in the last five, 10 years. All he does is come home from work and watch TV and then complain about the finances. Here's the thing, you can't complain about shit if you are unwilling to learn and to keep improving. Law number five, you'll know this one. You're the average of the five people that you spend time with. If you spend time with Jeffreys, you're gonna be more likely to act like a Jeffrey and to partake in their habits, like for example, playing video games or going out and drinking. But if you spend time with guys who are serious into business, you'll be more likely to, because suddenly when like four of your friends are gonna go say, okay, we're gonna go sit down and work on our businesses, you're gonna feel like a fool if you're like, oh, but guys, let's, let's just smoke weed and let's just play video games, right? An action step for you right now is to think about five people who you're close to and just ask yourself, what direction are they going to be pulling you towards? And if it's a direction that you don't want to go towards, it is your duty as a man to actually cut off that relationship 
because you can't change a person and if there's someone who's just going down a bad path who's just playing video games and just fine with being a fucking loser you are also fine with being a loser if you keep hanging out with them law number six progressive overload every guy who's serious in the gym understands what this is when you go to the gym progressive overload is when you start with a small amount of weight and over time over the months and years you add a little bit of weight to it every week and then more and then more and then more you started with the empty 20 kg barbell and after a couple of years you're bench pressing 100 kilograms you've got two full plates on that but you had to progress through these incremental milestones and self-improvement is exactly like that so when you want to meditate you don't start to meditate for 20 minutes or half an hour a day maybe you meditate for literally just 10 breaths first thing in the morning when you want to get better with girls you don't get pissed off that you can't get a girlfriend you start by just saying hello to a woman on the street we start at a small level and then we progressively overload to the level that we really want to get to many young guys forget about this law and then start getting pissed off when they don't get the results that they want out of life and they're pissed off that they can't speak to girls or that they're not making money you've got to start with the empty barbell and level things up slowly Along with this, law number seven is that weightlifting is the cornerstone of masculine self improvement if you're on self-improvement as a man weightlifting will be the most important habit that you do more than meditation more than reading more than working on your business everything weightlifting will be the most important it teaches you extremely valuable lessons like progressive overload like discipline and consistency setback and failure but also let's just be honest it makes you look like a fucking Greek god. It makes you feel like a Spartan. It makes you proud of yourself. It's so valuable having that moment when you're pushing that weight and you're grunting and gritting your teeth. That is so important for you to unleash some of that aggression. Now go ahead and go to a martial art and go running. Those things are awesome. But you've got to lift some weights. You've got to lift some weights and build a good, aesthetic, attractive, muscular, strong physique. Because that will do so much for you in your life. When you walk into a party or a social event or work or school and you are the biggest guy there, it's so easy to feel quite confident on that day. Law number eight, one hour of video games is unacceptable. You can replace video games with other things like anime or whatever the fuck else. When you're at these early stages and you're trying to transform your life and change your self-image or identity, one hour of these bad habits is completely and utterly unacceptable every day i'll see a comment from someone saying no no no, but hamza's too extreme he says one hour is not fine but i watch one hour of anime and i'm still fine it's no, no no when you're starting this journey you need to do whatever it takes to just outweigh the 10 15 years that you lived like a jeffrey and so when you want to make fast progress you cut out all of that bullshit now when you're already like a completely new man because of self-improvement when you are for example really rich and sexy and you can get girls and you can make a fuck ton of money and you're muscular. At that point, bro, if you want to go and take a week to be a degenerate and go to parties and stuff, by all means, go ahead. When you see all these like rich guys, they all do that. They all go out drinking and stuff. The reason why is because they're already fucking successful. But you can see that the bad habit that these guys do, like for example, Eman goes to the party. Andrew Tate goes to parties and nightclubs and drinks, right? The truth is, the stuff they're doing is just a lot more fucking enjoyable and social than being sat at home in your crusty computer chair and just watching another fucking anime so if you like right now if you want to go out to like a party and go learn to speak to girls i would actually support you in that because like it might not sound like self-improvement but if you went to a party you'd actually develop more than if you read an entire fucking book on social skills right so i actually would promote you for that one of them makes you more of a loser and the other one makes you more of like a g if you do it in the right way and i think that's way better that doesn't mean that you should go out to a party right now maybe you're not ready maybe it's not like your focus but i really think that's the better a bad habit like day off than just acting and living like a loser who's playing video games law number nine don't keep a streak whether it's on nofap or anything else the guys who keep a streak and are able to tell me like okay i'm on day seven of nofap i know for a fact i'm gonna fuck up anyone who's so autistic with self-improvement that they've turned into such a weirdo that they've counted how many days that they haven't masturbated for it's just odd to do that and it makes you this weird like autistic guy that people won't want to be friends with because that's the type of shit that you're interested in now by all means don't masturbate don't watch porn but if you're literally fucking counting the days and you're updating your discord fucking username to say like 121 days semen retention bicep emoji that's just fucking cringe and anyone who's not like a complete and utter loser would
would not be friends with you. And then what's the point of your self-improvement if you just isolated yourself? You don't want to live the life where you're the fucking weirdo, right? Don't count the days because another negative is that when you count the days, you feel worse when you relapse. What happens to the guy who counts the days and then relapses? He's on day zero. What does he do on day zero? He goes for a fapathon, right? You probably, if you count days of, of your nofap streak, you probably have had this. You reset and then you fap like three or five more times on the same day. For the guys who binge eat, it's the exact same thing. They'll be like, okay, it's been 17 days since I've have, had any sugar. They'll have a little bit and then they'll go all out, right? Because you're on day zero anyway. So it, it sets this really unhealthy mindset that if you're gonna mess up, you may as well make it massive. So the guys who, who count the streaks always do worse in these goals than the guys who are just normal fucking people, not autistic and just like not watching porn. Law number 10, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink it. So this refers to you trying to save your friends or your girl, where you can show them self-improvement. You could send them my videos, you could take them to the gym, but you can't force them to actually really give a shit about self-improvement. So I have a rule that when someone asks me for advice to help someone that they care about, I don't answer. I have never been able to help someone to help someone else who doesn't want to be on self-improvement. If your girl isn't serious on self-improvement, if your friends aren't serious on self-improvement, it is a complete and utter waste of your time trying to force them to get into it. Now, if your friend is super serious into it, super wants your help, fair enough. Because you know how difficult self-improvement is, even when you really, really care about it. Like, even when you really want to improve, it's so difficult. So imagine how impossible it is when there's someone who doesn't even have the fucking desire to improve anyway. Way. So if you have a friend or a girl right now that you really want to help but they don't really give a shit or they pretend to you know be interested, save your fucking time. Help the people who really want your help, help yourself. Don't waste your breath on people who don't even want to be on self-improvement. Law number 11, productivity is the gateway to making money. So recently you've been looking more into making money online, online businesses. The truth is you don't need a particular special business model or plan or anything like that. You don't even need a course or anything. What you actually need is productivity. Productivity is your ability to get work done. And the next law is really brutal. Law number 12, high performers are literally 100 times more productive than you. You think that's an exaggeration what I just said, that there's a guy who's so productive that he's a hundred times more effective at working than you. You think that that's an exaggeration. It's really the fucking truth. The way to make money through business is to be so productive that you actually get work done. You work like you've got mental disabilities. Honestly, you won't believe this right now. I'm just putting this into your brain because a few years from now, you'll remember what I'm saying. If we recorded you, like if we put a camera in your room and recorded you work, a few years from now, if you looked at that video clip, you would literally think you were mentally disabled. You work like literally like a special kid where you'll randomly be working and then you'll just stop and stand up and go look at yourself in the mirror and like flex for a second and then go back to working again. You'll work for about 30 seconds and then your phone will go off and you'll grab your phone and you'll reply to someone. Then you'll like stop working. Then you'll randomly open a different fucking web page. You randomly open this video when you're supposed to be working. Like you will literally work like an absolute like brain dead idiot. That's why you're not making any money. The barrier to making money online is that you've got to get good at being able to sit down and fucking work. It took me about nine nine months to learn that skill of actually being productive enough. And I've made so many like productivity guys. I've made a productivity course for my paid program, Adonis Schools. The second link in the description, you probably can't afford it, but I made like a paid course, like a step-by-step -step how to fucking work, how to stop being distracted by all like your phone, these notifications, alarms, all this stuff. I, I put in everything I knew into how to become more productive because it's so important. If you don't improve your productivity, your ability to get work done, you won't make money online. You just won't get any progress. Long number 13, you need your F T E. FTE stands for fuck this event. If you want to get super serious on self-improvement, if you want to make a fuck ton of money, if you want to get like really fucking muscular, you need your FTE. You need this particular moment where you're like, man, fuck this, where you're getting pissed at the world through aggression, through anger. That's what fuels you to take self-improvement seriously. So for some guys, it's a breakup. For other guys, it's like maybe graduating. This was mine. It was graduating from, 
university and then realizing how shit the modern world was if you just wanted to go work some shit full-time job. And I had this exact moment where I was working this shit job and I was like, man, I literally cried on the way home. And I was like, fuck this. Like anything's worse than this. I've got to make a change. That's when I got serious. That's when I started to wake up at 5 a.m. That's when I started to like, literally shave my head so I could save time from not needing to go to the barber shop and I could work on my business instead. You need like a big dramatic, emotional, painful moment. So it sounds horrible for me to say this, but I really hope you experience that. I really hope you experience a period of intense pain to the point that thoughts of suicide pop up in your mind, but you decide not to do anything like that. And you decide to put in the work to create the life that you want instead. Law number 14, you have to leave people behind. Once you've established this new path that you want to go on to, and you're realizing that there's people who you're still friends with, who aren't going to go down this path, and you're realizing that they're actually slowing you down, you're gonna have to leave people behind. Along with this, when you've been on self-improvement for a while, you'll meet more people who you are actually quite compatible with. But the truth is you will progress so much faster than everyone else. If you're watching videos like this, you're basically in the top 1% of guys who are taking self-improvement seriously. So I'm gonna tell you something that's gonna be brutal. You're gonna meet a girl within the next year who you actually fall in love with. And within only three to six months, you're going to leave her behind without meaning to because you will improve significantly. And the girl that you meet within a few months from now, she's just going to stay as like a Jessica. And within a few months, you'll realize that your value is going up. You're making more money. You're getting more confident, more muscular. And for her, it's like it's an uphill battle where she's not even going to the gym. She doesn't even want to like be on self-improvement. And then you'll have to make the hard decision. I've had to do it about five times to leave girls that you love behind because they literally just can't even like keep up with your rate of growth it sounds like heartless whatever but it's the fucking case like if you meet a girl let's say you're a five out of ten and she's a five within six months you're like a six and you'll start to notice like fuck like she's actually like a 4.7 like she six months she just gained a little bit of weight she just watched a bunch of fucking tiktok she's actually kind of a loser you'll realize more and more that like almost everyone you meet especially girls are just losers and they're not actually progressing as much as you are and you're gonna get used to just leaving people behind i'm kind of used to it now i'm used to breaking up with girls i'm used to just fucking meeting a guy thinking it's awesome and then never speaking to him again when i realize like oh he can't improve as fast as i can i guarantee within a few years you might remember what i'm saying now and be like fuck hamza was so right i thought he was just being an asshole but it's actually 100 the case you've got to get used to just leaving people behind who aren't able to keep up with your rate of growth because what's the alternative the alternative is that you stay with them even though you're resenting them even though you feel like they're kind of a loser law number 15 don't trust your jeffrey brain there's two different parts of your brain. There's your Jeffrey brain and there's your Adonis brain. Your Jeffrey brain convinced you to watch porn, what, a thousand times? Your Jeffrey brain convinced you to be fine playing 10,000 hours of video games. It's your Jeffrey brain that when you're texting a girl makes you say something stupid and then she stops replying. Why would you keep trusting your Jeffrey brain? So for you to progress in self-improvement, you want to make sure that you can try to identify the weak Jeffrey brain, the part of your brain that keeps telling you to do stupid shit and not listen to it. So when you're like literally staying clean on your diet and your brain randomly says, oh, go eat chocolate. Don't listen to that part of your brain. When your brain says, let's go watch porn. Don't listen to that part of your brain. You can't even trust your own brain. And so you have to try and find that beacon of light, that Adonis brain, the part of your brain that tells you to do the good thing that says, no, we're not going to watch porn. No, we're going to go and fucking run to the gym right now. I don't care if it's raining. Listen to that part of your brain. Make it louder. Law number 16, the environment controls your actions. In 2020, I was a fucking degenerate. You don't even realize I used to wake up and the first thing that I'd do is go take a shit. I'd go on my phone and watch porn at the same time. And whilst I was taking a shit, I'd be jacking off. Later on in the day, I'd be smoking weed, eating shit junk food, jacking off like two, three more times to fucked up porn. And I lived with my girlfriend. I literally had my girlfriend in the same apartment. That's how down bad I was. Guess how long it took me to change that? Six hours. I packed my things eventually. I moved out and I came back here to my family's home and literally instantly, I cut out all of the bad habits. I became like literally the pinnacle of self-improvement. I became the face of self-improvement on the internet. I became the leader of self-improvement. 
all I did was change the environment, destroyed that dirty, degenerate identity that I had, and I instantly was consistent in meditation, in dopamine detoxing, in gratitude journaling, in exercising, and getting sunlight, and speaking to strangers. It was incredible how much progress I made. All I did was change the environment. So you might be in a case right now where you can't change the environment, you live at home and there's no other alternative. That sucks. But eventually that you're gonna have the opportunity to maybe move out for college or maybe move out once your business is taking off. Take it. When you change the environment, you can update who you are, whoever you want to be, and you'll get the fastest rate of progress in your self-improvement journey when you move somewhere. And I'll give you a special tip. Sometimes you don't even actually have to move anywhere. You can just move things in your room. So look around your room right now. You could redesign your room, move your bed to that corner, move your wardrobe here, move your desk there. Take down this picture on the wall, replace it with this one, change everything. And so when you walk into your room, it's a constant reminder of like, oh yeah, I'm different. This is why I really recommend for guys who wanna go super hard on their self-improvement, get a trimmer and trim your fucking hair off. It sounds crazy to advise that, but when you buzz cut and you trim all your hair off like, like you're in the military, it creates this new identity that every time you're reminded that you've got no hair, it's like, oh shit, yeah, I'm serious. This is my new life. This is like what I'm gonna live like now. The top link in the description is my free program. It's completely free, which is an entire multi-hour course on how to take self-improvement seriously. And that's where I actually mentioned, it's called the Donna's Protocol. That's where I mentioned like you should trim your hair off. You should go speak to two girls a day and everything. It's the top link. Just go there right now. Law 17. Books and courses are better than YouTube videos and TikTok. Social media content like this, let's just be honest, it's fucking garbage. When you click on a YouTube video, the guy who's making the YouTube video doesn't actually give a fuck about you. He cares about just getting views and money. But inside of books and inside of courses, that's different. I see the difference. So I make courses for my paid group. You probably can't afford it, but it is the second link in the description if you want to go click that right now. And I make a course for them every month. And I always think to myself, holy fuck, that's like some good practical education with no dopamine bullshit none of these fucking like hit markers uh, what's that shit called? yeah hit markers and like fucking sound effects and explosions and shit it's like literally just pure education youtube videos and tiktoks are not even close to that so if you really want to level up in your self-improvement journey you go and pay for courses and books and you learn from them right now you might be thinking no but all the information's for free i promise you it is not YouTube videos are free, but they are not the same as actually buying an educational course or a book. My paid program is linked as the second link in the description. I really recommend you go click on that right now if you wanna go invest in your self-improvement and put it onto the fast track. Click and watch this video right now, do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. Mwah.